to go another day, to go another week, to go another month in network marketing. And, and, I, and I just pray that I can just help at least one person to make a difference in the life of somebody else. And so every time, like when I forget to do that, it doesn't go very well. And hi, Blue. I love seeing Blue Elam. I never get to see enough of him. And uh, what a class man. Uh, working beside Blue is an honor. And I said, I'm going first. <laughs> I don't want to follow Blue. I also have a call at uh, six o'clock, which is not six o'clock your time. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is, wow, the few weeks before Thanksgiving and Christmas. And there are some people that say, you know what, I'm tuning out, I'm taking off. And I'm going to tell you something, my rank advancements, my biggest advancements have happened during this kind of time. I remember I hit the highest rank in a company in February, and it's not the work that you do in January that gets you to the highest rank in the company in February. It's the work that you do at the end of the year. And I'm just telling you, to me, there's never been a better time to be a part of Life Vantage, and the holidays just increase the opportunity to be efficacious, to be effective, no kidding. This is the time to ramp up your connection and conversations even if you are only face-to-face -face on a Zoom. I'm telling you, one of the neatest things about, uh, well, COVID is for people to really understand that you can open up a bottle of wine or, or drink a cup of coffee at eight o'clock in the morning with your grandma. You know, you can really have a deep connection sitting face-to-face, -face, even if you're online. But I never, ever, ever left my business to online. I've always, always, always worked in, per uh, in person. And truly, yeah, I, I think about the fact that, that there's something out there. I think I had it way before anybody else uh, talked about it. But, um, you know, it's the flu, and it's a not good flu. And if you have a, an pre-existing condition, it can be bad. But I am an in-person girl, and I have taken the opportunity to travel all over the world during this time. I have had so much fun. I've gone to Vallarta twice, just got back from Puerto Vallarta. People love in person. I had a blast in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> Puerto Vallarta, I'm practicing my Espanol. And um, I am so bummed that we're not in Marco Island for the elite retreat, but I encourage you guys, see people. Even if you have to keep a little distance between you, see people when you can. I was camping last week, or. Uh, yeah, camping, kind of glamping a little bit, but it's crazy the conversations that can be had now when the world is a little different. You can have more serious, deeper conversations with people and find out what they don't have in their life that they want. And I was sitting with a woman, oh my gosh, it was so much fun. I got introduced to her and we started talking and I found out that she was a long range pilot, that she flies to Australia, she flies to Korea, she flies to Japan, only long range. She's been in the industry as a pilot, my age, for 30 years. She's raised two kids, she's home with her husband now. And it was amazing. I mean, she started talking about going, like all these trips, I don't know that you guys would know some of the things that, but she was telling me how she started a symphony with her simple violin and had a whole bunch of people join her. Very quickly, it became clear to me that this woman was special. This woman was different. This woman was a leader. And I flat out looked right at her and I said, Claudia, can I just ask you? I said, would you have any desire after 30 years in the air just to stay home with your husband and let your family multiply and hang out with your kids? And I had no idea. I mean, it took me a long time to tune in to the fact that there might be anything that this woman didn't have in her life that she wanted. And she looked straight at me and she said, are you kidding? I would die to stay home. I would love to stay home. And I said, really? So you'd like to start a business and get rich with me? And she said, oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh, tell me more. And right there, I took it away. I said, this is not the time. Tonight, we're out under the stars enjoying a beautiful evening. But listen, lady, I'm gonna be contacting you. There are things that people don't have in their lives that they want. And as we get nearer the holidays, well, we're on the holidays, people are more willing to open their hearts. They're more in touch with their feelings. 
They're more in touch with what they don't have that they want. This is the best time of the year to build your business with LifeVantage. But you have to be a little professional. You have to be a little bit, uh, you have to be a fantastic listener. Again, you need to find out what somebody doesn't have in their life that they want. And you may have to ask a question. And like I said, my question was, oh my gosh, you've been flying for 30 years. Is there any chance that you'd like to stay home? And she was like, absolutely, I would love to stay home. So got a couple of questions that I wrote down. Just, I have a, a question in light of what's going on right now. Everybody knows what's going on right now. I mean, nobody knows exactly what's going on right now, but we have an idea. In light of what's going on right now, if the right opportunity came along, would now be a good time in your life to take a look? Ask the question. Now, if somebody's sick and they're not feeling well, you're probably not gonna necessarily ask about the opportunity, right? You're gonna ask some questions about how they're feeling. And if someone's not feeling good and they're sharing details about what they're dealing with, ask a lot of questions, get more information, get more information, get more information. You may even leave that Zoom call, leave that meeting. You may go away and think later in a few days, contact them and say, you know, I couldn't, I, it wasn't the right time the other day, but I haven't been able to stop thinking about you and what you shared about yourself, your mother, your sister, your father. I, I, I haven't been able to stop thinking about you. And based on what you said, I would be a bad person if I didn't share some information that I had. You know, were you just venting or would you be open to a solution, a potential solution? You don't always have the answer for people, so don't think that you do. You only have the answer for somebody if they think that you have the answer for them. So at this time of year, at this time in this place between Thanksgiving and Christmas and into New Year and beyond, people are dealing with issues. They're dealing with family. They're dealing with loneliness. They're dealing with isolation. They're dealing with illness. They're dealing with financial concerns. You potentially have the answer. If you're not super, super arrogant and believe that you have all the answers, you may have an answer. If you're willing to listen, to open your ears, to learn, 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 even be willing to walk away and come back with a potential solution. So I have a gal in my business, Marcy Steiner, and this girl is like the queen. She is incredible at training. She's incredible at sharing the opportunity. Like I said, her first question, in light of what's going on, if the right opportunity came along, would now be a, a good time in your life to take a look. She calls it being at now o'clock. I love that. Are you at now o'clock? Is now the right time? If I showed you something amazing that could potentially help you, you know, put some money together for a family vacation, put some money together to retire or whatever, would now be a good time to take a look? So then she says, you know, I've been into, for me, Carrie Dickey, it would be, you know, I've been into wellness my whole life. Like I do yoga, I have yeah, water system in my house, a $10,000 water system. I was always trying to find the latest, greatest potion and stuff to put in my body to look and feel better. You know that, right? And you get agreement. Or you can say, you know, I've been a fireman my whole life. Like Blue Elam, I've been a firefighter forever. And oh my gosh, I had to sleep at the station and I had to you know, put my life in danger. I had to be away from my family. I had to cook meals at the station, whatever it is. You know that about me, right? So share a little information. Well, I was introduced to a business opportunity a few months ago, weeks ago, days ago, whatever. I got excited. This is big. Would you be open to taking a look at doing something with me? So own, you maybe aren't into what, you know, you weren't into wellness before. That's okay. Talk about a little bit of the pain that you experienced. You know, I've been a firefighter my whole life. I was away from my family. I slept at the station. I had to cook a meal once a week, right? I put my life on, on the line every single day. You know that about me, right? Well, recently I was introduced to a business opportunity that got me really, really excited. And I thought of you, and here's why I thought of you. So would you be open to taking a look? If it was something cool, would you like to look at it? Is now the time? Are you at now o'clock? 
you want to imagine that you're setting up your business. You know, Marcy always says, look at this big, tall high rise and you have eight or five, right? Pro 12, five built five beautiful offices that you are trying to fill. Who would be those people that you would want to fill your offices with? You're not going to go down on the food chain. Likely you're going to go up to people that are already successful. You guys, seriously, that's one of the biggest issues I see in network marketing is that people are so afraid that they go down on the food chain. They recruit down. And if someone is barely making ends meet, it's likely that they don't have enough vision or they could be between successes. And that happens. I'm always looking for someone who is between successes. Made it, lost it, made it, lost it. I wanna get them on the upswing. Let's find someone who is hungry, and knows what it means to make money and have some freedom, right? But uh, you're looking for someone who is looking and really, you've got to go through the numbers. My friend Sharice Matthews just says, man, Carrie, we just gotta tell people, you know, her dad was a dentist. You're just going through 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 people. You wanna be a dentist? You wanna be a dentist? You wanna be a dentist? And she said, well, this guy doesn't wanna be a dentist, but." toothbrushes are for you, right? So you may not want to build a business, but Pro Tandem Nerf 2 Activator and its accompaniments, like all the products, are for you, right? You may not want to be a dentist, but toothbrushes are for you. You have to have the attitude that you're just going through the numbers. You know, I used to say, you know, get in or get out of my way. I'm going through a line. Get in or get out of my way. I'll come back for you, but this is A and I'm going to Z and I'm looking for a few good people, a few people that want to have fun, make money, make a difference. Really, we've been talking about that from day one with Life Vantage, have fun, make money, make a difference. You guys are working online using LinkedIn or Facebook, fantastic. All you're doing is going where the fish are, right? We're going to go catch some fish. But in catching fish, you have to look at their interests. What are they looking at? What are they lacking in their life that they don't have right now? So you look at their feed, you look at the information that they're giving you and you latch onto it in a way that is natural, just like, and, and, and you know what? You gotta be bad before you're good and good before you're great. Sometimes it doesn't feel that natural the first time you're doing it. But the, the more you work at it, the better you get. And again, Facebook and LinkedIn is one place to fish. I go to yoga every day. Thank goodness my guy's like, I'm not closing. And I can talk to people all day, every day at yoga. I went camping. I talk to people at camping. I go and do. And I share this opportunity by learning about people and asking questions. So again, I have a question in light of what's going on. If the right opportunity came along, would now be a good time to take a look? Would now be a good time? Well, you know, I've been in fitness forever. I've been a fitness instructor, bartender, graduated from CU, University of Colorado Boulder with a degree in advertising, never knew what I did want to do, only knew what I didn't want to do. So grateful I've come upon something I'm excited about, right? This is what I did in the past. Well, I was introduced to a business opportunity that I'm pretty excited about. I'm not attached. I would love to share with you. I'm not attached to the results. Just want you to know what I'm so excited about. Another thing is ask for referrals. Listen, I know this wasn't for you. I get it. The timing isn't right. Who do you know? Not do you know? Who do you know that is into health and wellness? Who do you know that's made it, lost it, made it, lost it? Who do you know that needs more money to get some presents for Christmas? Who do you know that's trying to send a kid to college? Who do you know that is trying to get a, buy a home? been renting forever, whatever it is, you've got to create faces for people and ask for what you want. And uh, Sharice Matthews always talks about the signal. Tony Robbins talks about the signal. Your signal has to be higher than the person standing in front of you. You have to have a strong, powerful signal about what you have. And it's not an ego thing. It's not an arrogance thing. It's just a conviction, passion, enthusiasm thing. When I looked in that lady's the other, eyes the other night and I said to her, oh my gosh, maybe you wanna stay home with your kids. I think I said something obnoxious like, perhaps you wanna stay home with your kids. 
and do a business from home and get rich with me. Would that be of interest to you? You think if I had a weak signal, that would have worked out very well for me? Absolutely not. She knew I had something because I was passionate about it. So you guys, it's really, really important. And I'm telling you what, I've had that signal from day one. Not because I was making money from day one, but because I saw opportunity from day one. I got to tell you, I was so much more obnoxious when I was making about $5,000 a month than I am now making many, many, many times that money. I was so obnoxious because I knew if I can make $5,000 a month, I can make $500,000 a month. I mean, I was able to create that money and I thought it was a miracle. I mean, I had never made more than $20,000 in any calendar year in my life. So you're telling me that it's possible to make $5,000 in a calendar month and I tell you, I'm rolling, I'm going with this. And all I needed to know was that somebody on the universe on planet Earth had done it and I knew I was going to do it. And it all st stems back to your why. And in the very beginning, I don't know what's the matter with me. I'm wired differently. I have no idea. But I heard the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the people do 20% of the work and 20 do 80. And then they talk about the one percenters. And I find with this whole COVID crazy thing, you know, I, like I said, I know there's something going on out there. But I'm, I'm thinking way out of the box, like way out of the box. Like what's really going on? And most people are putting their mask on behaving. And I'm not, I'm traveling everywhere. I'm woo, I, I know that this is, there's never been a better time to be an individual, right? So you, you, you're different. You guys, we're different here in network marketing. We've got to embrace that. I, I fought it. I just wanted to be freaking normal. I wanted to be normal. I wanted to be a normal girl with normal issues. And I never was normal and I would have done anything not to be normal or wanted to be normal. And now I realize, oh my goodness, being abnormal is fabulous. It's fantastic. So embrace being abnormal. So let me give you a couple more invites. If I could teach you how to build a secondary income, woo, secondary income from home alongside what you're currently doing would now be a good time to talk. I mean, that's a beautiful question, right? If I could teach you how to build a secondary income alongside what you're currently doing, would now be a good time to talk? You know, if you guys sent that out 30 times a day, randomly, you're going to get somebody that says, absolutely. I'm not kidding you. One time, it's kind of a crazy story, but I, I literally went to a spin class. And there was a guy called Bob that, read, that was teaching this class for 25 years. And he liked me. And he said, sure, yeah, you can be, yeah, this is when I was doing juice. You know, I've been in four companies and, and I'm telling you, Life Vantage is your first rodeo. You're very, very, very lucky. But Bob said, yeah, you can come share your juice. So I had a cooler, I came in there and there were about 25 people in class. And at the end of the class, he said, hey, my friend Carrie's gonna talk to you for a second. I said, hey, everybody, man, that was a great sweat. Glad to be here today. Listen, I got a, a multi-million dollar business I'm a successful entrepreneur. That's why I can spin anytime I want. I said, look, if you're into health, come talk to me. If you want to feel, look and feel better, come talk to me. If you want to make some money, come talk to me. Most people looked at me like I had two heads on and walked out. The, I'm not kidding. Couldn't believe it. You know, health opportunity. They mostly went walking out the door. There were about four people that came over to talk to me about the product. And one couple came over to me to talk about the business. I followed them home and signed them up on a thousand dollar package as God is my witness. No kidding. Five people, four product users, one, it was a, it was a pack equivalent to the plan, a platinum pack. And I signed them up. So I'm telling you guys, it is a numbers game. If you threw this out to 30 people with enthusiasm, passion, and a little bit of connection, you would potentially have success. So anyway, I've got something you've got to see. I love this one. If you like it, it's something we can do together. I've got something you've got to see. Somebody type it. If you like it, it's something we can do together. That's kind of like exciting. We can do it together. You're not going to be alone, right? If not, no problem. I'm not attached. I just want you to know what I'm so excited about. Look at someone wrote. Oh, I love it. I've got something you've got to see. Uh, if you like it, it's something we can do together. If you like it, it's something we can do together. If not, 
no problem. I'm not attached. I just want you to know what I'm so excited about. What a beautiful, that was actually Bob, uh, no, 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 Fred Davis. Love that, love that, love that. Um, you guys, it really doesn't matter what you say. It's how you say it, how convicted you are, and how many invitations you give. You, this is the time, this is the time, and it's time to go deeper with people that you know, people that you love, and people that you care about. You know, I wanna, I wanna show you this. There is a chart. I love, love, love this. I, I use this. At Pro2 in our business, the monthly income is $242 a month. At Pro3, average income, $626 a month. At Pro4, average income, $1,496 American dollars, $1,496. At Pro5, about $3,000. Average monthly income. Do you know that in order to get that pro four income, right? That pro four income in the bank, you would have to have $970,000, just under a million dollars at 1.85% interest. You would have to have, you would have to have $970,000 in the bank to spin off that 1496. Are you kidding me right now? That is huge. Average monthly income, just under 1,500 bucks. You would have to have almost a million dollars at 1.85% to spin that off. Very interesting numbers, but look what happens at Pro 5. Average income, $3,000 a month. You would have to have $2,015,000. Are you kidding me right now? It's incredible if you talk to people about that, how much you would have to have in the bank to, and who's gonna give you 1.85%, but at 1.85%, you'd have to have a million dollars to create a pro four income, two million to create a pro five income. Listen to this one, this is crazy. At pro six, to create an average monthly income of $7,000 a month, you would have to have four million $500,000, look at that last column. That's insane. $4.5 million to spin off a Pro 6 income. Why wouldn't somebody do this? You know, here during COVID, it's crazy. I'm trying to figure out like, you know, where should you invest your money? What should you do? And sometimes I get a little overwhelmed by that. And then I remember, wow, there are people out there that don't have any money at all to manage. They're scared to death. You guys have a, an opportunity in your hands like I've never seen before. So I invite you to be serious and I want you to close your eyes. Uh, give me one more minute, Blue. I want you guys to close your eyes and I want you to just hear this. It's coming from my heart to yours. I've said it before, but our it's a Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people will not feel insecure around you. That's a big one. We were all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God within us. And it's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously allow other people to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. You guys, I invite you to be brave. I invite you to be courageous during this time. I invite you to step in and step up and own your power and your greatness. You shouldn't give two rats about what anybody thinks about you. They do not have the ability to create this in their hands. They don't, and you do. So don't worry about the naysayers. Go find someone who thinks like you. 
Thank you for letting me share. I hope it's so weird. You know, I can't read then. I, anyway, I believe in each and every one of you. I believe uh, you have the power within you to create anything you want. And thank you for the invite to share with you today. Mwah! Carrie, thank you so much. I love that you finished with those beautiful words um, from Marion Williamson. It's it's just so true, right? Does anyone drop it in the trap? The Look track. at Robin, she oh. already put it on. Woo! <laughs> wow, Dang. Let's see the chat. That's oh. nervous, baby. Oh. Beautiful, Robin. Thank you so much for popping that in because do, it, does anyone resonate with that? I, I think it's just such powerful words that so many of us are afraid to shine and be the brilliant beings that we truly are. So um, a beautiful way to close your sharing, Carrie. Thank you so much again for being with us today. Thank you for all you do to support the South Pacific region. Um, we love that you're always holding hands with us and here to support. So have Thank a beautiful you. It's my pleasure. And um, I'm sure we'll be seeing you again in 2021. So thank you for everything this year. I'm going to stay here for about 15 minutes and then I'm going to have to run. But I'm so delighted to have been invited. Thank you for always thinking of me. It means the world. Absolutely. We'll be seeing you soon. Thank you again, Carrie. Okay, let's keep going. We've got some more um, exciting things coming right now. We have a very, very special guest. We've been bugging Blue all year to come and jump on one of our calls. And... Um, we know he's pretty flat out, as you can imagine. Big business, big family, big life. And um, um, Blue is also one of, one of our very, very, very top um, founders and leaders in Life Vantage. And um, Blue, we're just so happy to have you here today to share with us. And um, I know that there's quite a, a few new people on the call, so I'm sure they'll be really interested, Blue, to hear a little bit about your background and your story as well as you open up for us today. So. It's an absolute privilege to have you. Please welcome Blue Elam. Woo! I feel like we should have started out with the song, I'm blue, dub and dee, dub and die. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that one before. Welcome, Blue. Awesome. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Uh-huh. Okay. It glitched out just for a second. But um, first of all, thank, thank all of you. Uh, the chat's just so full of, of appreciation and gratitude, and it's just... Um, you guys are amazing. And I, I'm like you, Carrie, but I hear Australia, New Zealand, there's just a special spot in my heart um, for the kindness. And, and I want to add something with the straightforwardness. I think there's something about Australia that I love because it's more like I grew up on the ranch. It's, it's handshakes and it's straightforward. And um, I remember showing up one time at a meeting uh, after being there eight different times consecutively over a couple years. And I came back maybe six months, eight months later and or no, it was about a year later, actually. And somebody had said, hey, you gained 15 pounds. And I'm like, yeah, actually 18, but thank you. And, and it's almost- oh, That's so funny, it's, typical Australian blue. I love it. And, and, <laughs> I, and I'm not saying it's just that, it's just this, this I'm to teach, it's to the point. I love, I, I can teach the same way. I, I, it didn't, <laughs> don't offend at all. It's actually, I wish, we had more of people that could just talk open and, and be, be there, be present and, and look at you and, and talk and communicate and listen and feel. And, um, and man, I, I actually <laughs> uh, enjoyed going down there so much. We went down a lot. I took my wife down and we actually spent 18 days between there and New Zealand visiting and, and just, and uh, we hit a whole, so many different places and went back with Geraldo. And I think we hit 10 different places. Um, uh, what, what amazing stop. What, what, you know, every time we stopped, we would talk and, and share and I would learn just about as much as I think I taught. Um, so we had a good time. But because of that, I think I can be straightforward tonight and as, as well. That's one thing I've enjoyed and we're just going to talk and maybe, um, I don't know if Ra's the right, right world, but maybe the right word, but maybe real. It's just to, just to be real and, and, and chat tonight. So Carrie, first of all, I know you might have to run. So I'll just thank you before I get started. Um, you're always so thoughtful, a quick text, a kind word. It just keeps me going. And I know you've been through a lot and um, you're, the vibe you put off is amazing. I, I wish I had that kind of energy and vibe. I think my vibe's different, different kind of attraction, but you've always done it through an amazing energy that is contagious. So um, thank you. Thanks for sharing tonight. And uh, I appreciate you jumping on with us. Thank you. So one thing I think uh, maybe... I just took a quick note and I think Carrie shared a lot of the how and I, 
I think my story and being asked to share my story is a little more on the why than just the how, but I think they tie in very well tonight. And I'm actually grateful that Kerry was able to, to get on and able to split this time and so we can do this that way because um, it's very balanced that way. Um, sharing a lot of, of how and details. And we just attended a, a wonderful um, convention where we got some details. We finally got on the same page. We got, um, we're chanting the same, same words, even though I think we were doing very similar things, um, all the different teams, all, we're, we have the same processes, but, but now we have a name for it. And when we hear ITT, um, uh, there's so many different pieces that I think have come together. Uh, when we hear flip the switch, right? Um, sell, reach, mentor. I just, I love the fact that there's a march, okay? There's a cadence and there's things that we can get behind. And that is going to help. Um, I think we'll see that benefit a little bit right now, but we're going to see that magnified uh, in the future because it takes that kind of cadence and march, I think, to, to get the results that we are all truly, truly looking for. So, let me start with a quick quote, and um, this comes from my firefighting days. I'm going to try to tie it in because it means so much to me. Um, in, the, in the fire academy, if you can imagine, we have to learn to prioritize, and sometimes it's sad when you have to triage at an accident or make decisions based on doing the most good for the most people, and sometimes it's hard because I don't like leaving anyone behind. Um, but sometimes there's, there's masses that are running and there's one that's, that's, that's not going to make it, right? And we had to, to learn the hard way um, in some of those cases. And so there was a, a little bit of a, a phrase or a motto that we learned to protect ourselves and to balance risk, okay? If, if that's an easy way to, <laughs> to say this. Um, think about this for a minute. In the terms of firefighting, okay, if I said risk a lot, save a lot. Okay, and I heard this off and on, but I'm going to share this a little bit differently tonight. Risk a lot to save a lot. If you know there's a lot at stake, you're going to see some crazy firefighters, men and women willing to risk their lives because there's a lot at stake. Okay, and I mentioned this, you pull up to a hotel in the middle of the night and there's a fire, you know it's full of people. Okay, there's no, there's no question that there's a lot at risk. You pull up to a warehouse in the middle of the night, no one might be in there. It's just stuff, right? The stuff can burn. No, no use in risking lives for stuff. But um, in that case, we would say risk a little to save a little, right? We'll still have some risk. We'll still get in there. We'll still do our job. But um, maybe even risk nothing to save nothing, right? We're not saving anything important. Let's not risk, not take a risk. And um, there's a balance. And then we always added the phrase risk everything to save everything. And I want to start off tonight just by saying that I've seen people approach their business this way. I've seen people approach um, their, the way that they, per, uh, personal growth, the way that they, they treat themselves, the way that they talk about themselves. I've seen people have their businesses. They feel there's a lot at risk. There might be a lot at risk. They might have a, a situation at home they're trying to fix, a financial situation, a health situation. And they will risk more because there's more to save. When things are okay and they're great and they're good, a lot of times it's harder to, to risk things or try new things because there is a balance already, at least we think there is. And um, the situation right now, I think you call it, Carrie, the thing that's going on, right, that everyone's aware of, has created maybe a reason to risk. It has created a reason to feel that things aren't perfect, they're not ideal, our health could be changed in seconds. Uh, our financial situation could change. The job we get to drive to every day might be uh, held off for a while. What does that mean? Well, how much savings do we have? When does our ne next check come? If it comes, question after question after question. So Carrie, you've done a great job tonight hitting what I would call the, the, the how, right? How do we turn that situation into um, a benefit for them? Um, and providing solutions to them. If you can think about all the things we have to offer, it fits those categories perfectly. That now the world sees that there's a lot to risk, and so they will risk more. They will listen a little bit more. They will spend a little bit more, hopefully, and they will try a little bit more. And I have seen this so clearly. Um, I have 
you know, me, I carry on with you. I want to shake hands and give hug, give hugs. I zoom's okay, <laughs> but man, and I want to invent a little box that a, a hand comes out and we at least can shake hands afterwards um, or something, but it's different. It, we can still see each other, get some facial expressions, but it, we're just, you know, we're just missing some of those components, but some have completely embraced and understood the transition and have done even better during this time because of those things that the world is looking for and our ability to solve and help in those areas. And so it's been powerful when you think about our opportunity right now. Okay. So why we have something to offer, we have something to help. We have something the world needs and it's usually our, our fears or shyness or, or whatever those are that, that slow that process down. And then when we finally get over those, it's sometimes the other end of people thinking things are fine, we're comfortable, I don't need anything else, I don't need any more, and they just settle. And one of the most dangerous things I found in my life is when I, anytime I think I, I settle, I find that I get st stale, stagnant, if that's the right word, things just aren't progressing, I love progression. And I think that's when things, uh, I wanna say bad, but things in life, um, when they're not progressing, it feels like I'm not fulfilling my purpose. And I think, Carrie, you kind of ended with that purpose of who we are, being children of God and being pushed um, to limits that we don't even maybe even understand or know. And through trials and some of these things, we get to find out uh, what some of those things are. And I do believe that this industry, this business pulls out our biggest strengths. They magnify them. They teach us. They help us to see the, the true value in us. They also show us our weaknesses very quickly just by the process. And we get to choose what we get what we do with those weaknesses. We can make them strengths. We can turn them into benefits through personal growth and through getting on calls like this and listening to the how, listening to the why and, and hearing others' stories to hopefully inspire us to, to be a little bit better. Um, I do believe that good, true leadership is always close enough to relate, but just far enough ahead to inspire. That's one of my favorite quotes because it, it means all of us need to not forget where we came from. We need to always remember what it was like to make the first phone call, right? Put that first name on a piece of paper. Uh, man, tough times. It was, remember that. Remember that so that when you are pro 10s, pro 9s, pro 8s, and you're doing very well and you feel you've had some success, you remember that brand new person so that you can relate. But also don't be afraid to share a little bit to inspire, okay? And anytime you hear us share in any successes or things we learned, I hope you hear the lesson. It's not just to tell you stories about our life and you know things going on, and it's more to help you to understand that there's a process. Maybe we relate to you better than someone else. Carrie may grab half of you and that you really relate to. I may grab another half, and everyone ends up getting inspired because of those types of stories, those types of um, uh, openness or being real being able to share some of those. So um, a little bit, just down in my background, I got one quick story that will help you understand where I came from. And I hope all of this turns into a big training, a big hole that we can grab hold of and, and use going forward. But um, my, my family grew up very poor, very, very simple. We lived on a ranch, um, very small house, very just hard work. And, you know, the, the joke was always, if, you, if you're told to go fix the fence, you, you go fix the fence and you don't come home until the fence is fixed, right? If you got cold or dark or you get hungry, that didn't matter because uh, the fence wasn't fixed, right? So that's the concept I grew up with. And, and a little funny story that helped you understand this is um, my, my dad believed that if you had a, a vehicle, right, you bought it usually from someone else who probably wore it out and sold it to you or gave it to you for free because they thought it was broke and we got it fixed and, and got, got it running. But we would drive those vehicles. And, and the idea of when do we get rid of them was very simple, right? You drive the part that's broken you go to the parts store you wait in line and uh, when they tell you the price of the part then you have to decide if the car is worth that and that's how simple it was right you get an alternator in your hand it's 180 dollars and you have to decide if my car is worth 180 dollars because that's what it's going to take to get it running and um, just so you know the car i was driving when i started this industry um, i was literally i kid you not standing in line at the auto zone our local parts place with windshield wiper blades in my hand and I asked myself that question, if the vehicle was worth the $12 or whatever it was going to be to, to put windshield wiper blades on my vehicle. 
Um, and then I remembered it had some fuel in it, some gas. And so I, I you know, opted that, to go and purchase those because the price of the car, because it had a full tank of gas was probably worth it. So um, literally grew up that way, you guys. And that's the car I drove to meetings. And so you can imagine pulling up to, to presentations, no mufflers, loud people hear me coming. And I pull up and I run into the room to tell them how to make money. I'm the one there to teach them how to have successful business. And my car parked outside. Sometimes I had to park it down the block, it felt like, um, so that they would listen because it was such a far road, such a long distance to where I wanted to be. Long way. The well that I was going to be digging was, was, wasn't a 40-foot well. We can get it done in a weekend. It was, it was, the water was far deep. And it was tough. And th that's just the idea of how to relate to some of the challenges. And the funny part, one thing I love about Australia is I came to a meeting in Australia and I, I got to look back in my notes to see who, I don't remember the fellow's name, but when I left the meeting, I was offered a ride to the local restaurant to eat. And I got in that exact same vehicle <laughs> in Australia to get a ride. And I had my video, I showed that person and they laughed. Same sunroof, same vehicle, same year. Um, not quite as beat up, but I think the muffler still had a hole in it. And it was amazing to relate so closely, not, not a little bit, but so closely. Um, and I got a ride and we talked in that vehicle and I just saw myself all again starting over in that new person. And it was good for me. It was good for me to see that brand new person being that relatable to me as well. And then we try to inspire. We try to share those little stories to help us realize where we're heading and where we're going. Uh, I came home one day, told my wife, we found it. I found a way out. It's a lot of work. We're going to do it together. I huddled my family up. Once a, once a week, we have a family home evening, we call it. We all meet at home. There's nothing else planned. All the people, all the kids meet. We get to share. It's an open platform for the youngest to share, the oldest to share. And sure enough, I bring up this point that I need to take away the time that is for my family already. And I said, I, I got to take it away for a little while. And if you guys let me go do this, I think we can have all the time we want in the future. Okay, something amazing to do with your family. And my daughter, you guys know Celestial, she spoke on stage a few times. Cece, she, she just said, Dad, she's about eight years old at the time. She said, Dad, are you asking us if you can do this? Or are you just telling us you're going to do it? <laughs> and I said, well, I, I like to do it, but I am asking. She said, if you're really just asking, the answer is no. I said, Th those three or four hours a week we get after firefighting and side jobs and fixing cars and hanging drywall, ranching, all the other stuff we did. She said, the answer is no, we, we, we don't see you enough as it is. And that's what was breaking my heart. And to hear her say that, I almost said no to this. I almost said, you know what? Those four hours are, are enough. I almost settled like I tell people not to do. And the reason I share that story is I don't want you to settle. I'm not saying don't spend time with your kids. I'm just saying that temporary imbalance to pull those hours away was the best decision I ever made. Not that year, because I missed every ball game that my kids had, but, but now it's amazing. I don't have to miss anything. And that was the, the transitional day was that night. My wife jumped in and said, you kids, let me explain something. If we give dad the time now, we can have him in the future, all that we want. And my daughter thought about it and said, that sounds good, but how long is that going to take? And my wife didn't answer that. I wish she answered that one. That would have been helpful, but she didn't answer that one. She just looks at me and says, yeah, how long is that going to take? Making sure that I was committed, right? In her own loving little way. And my answer was very simple. It says, depends on how we commit to this. It depends on if we own it and we learn it and we, we take ownership and we run with this ourselves. And we did, we committed. And I came home, you know, months later to uh, get a sandwich at middle of the day. And my, my daughter was like, dad, what are you doing home? We don't, we're not pro tens yet. Get out there and get this done. Right. She literally thought this was just some quick overnight deal. And we tried to make it that we hit some ranks pretty quick. I came back one year later to my family and reported back to them and said, Hey, we did. Um, you know, I think we were, we were about pro eights off nines and we had a decent income, more money than we've ever had as, as you know, firefighter. And I said, we did it but that we're not done because there's so many people I've committed to so many people that, that we want to help, but I will give you your time back. And then you guys know the story with our family. She planned the, the dates with dad. Let's get one day a week each. And I have six kids. So that's six days that I gave to them or evenings. And my first thing my daughter does is plan a, a day at the spa and I get invited. I didn't know where I was going. She gave me the address. I show up and I'm sitting in this room with about 30 other you know, young ladies and women, and they're all looking at me. I got my boots on, my cowboy hat, my belt buckle. I'm like, I'm in the wrong place. 
But I look at my daughter, she's smiling. And I thought, this is what it's really about. She's laughing. She's giggling at me. I'm getting my toes done and nails done. I, yeah, way out of my, my comfort zone. But to see my daughter happy was amazing. And to spend time, right? And it was fun with each of us as we went on. And we kept setting goals. We kept hitting rank. And we, we pushed on. And we finally pushed hard enough. And then when they opened up the, the executive and presidential ranks, we hit that executive rank that early, early that year. Um, and then we had a big tragedy, right? I, don't, I tell people all the time, I don't plan. I hope you never have to go through something like this, but you just don't know. And, and I think we've all experienced a little bit this year to maybe relate to this. But um, we were coming home from a volleyball game and I, we were in a bad car accident. My two oldest daughters, my wife, myself, and we had just hit that rank. We had just dug the well, in my opinion, very deep, not as deep as we wanted, but it was deep and there's water flowing in. We have extra and, and all those concepts with digging that well, a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work when things were okay. Okay. So I hope that relates to you. It's a lot of work when things were good, but it turned into a blessing to us because I woke up in the hospital, found out my two daughters were paralyzed. My, my wife was going to lose her leg. I had broken my femur and probably... Uh, they wouldn't walk. I had a long road if I was able to walk. Um, my wife had the same if she could get a prosthetic and do the same. And had 18 other broken bones. And I mean, the list goes on and on. I, I don't need to, to tell all the details, but I just want you to know how fast things can change. And instantly, I look at my wife, I look at myself, and I'm like, man, who's getting up first? Who's going to get out of bed and go help the rest of the kids, the rest of the situation? Because we weren't in a position to get up. I mean, if mom or dad were hurt, that's one thing. The other one can fill in and cover, but both of us sitting there looking at each other. And that's when I realized the value of what we just built, the value of not worrying about where that next check was coming from. And it wasn't that it was just this lifelong income that was built and our work was done. It was that we had built leaders. We had built team. We had built mentors. We had trained. They took spots. When I went out to the waiting room and saw pictures in the waiting room, there was more people from my life vantage family than anywhere, our regular family or everywhere else. Life vantage showed up as a family to support and help, um, took meetings, took, you know, helped our business. Leaders stepped up that, that we were helping. What an amazing test of what we hoped would never have to be tested, but it was amazing. And here's what I hope you learn from that, you guys, is you just don't know. Right now, while the time is good, is the time to go work, it's the time to dig. It's the time to, to, to get to the water because when, if you start digging a well after you're thirsty, you might not make it, right? Especially if you live in Arizona, <laughs> you won't make it. If you start digging a well right now and you're thirsty, you, you won't make the water before you need it, okay? And too many people wait till their health gets bad and then they think about our products or they wait until their finances go away and then they start their business and wonder why it's so tough. Go to work right now, fit this in the nooks and crannies, make it a priority, Maybe miss a few ball games if that's what you are inclined to do. I'll never tell someone to, to miss something because I don't know what's going to happen in their lives, but think about it, throw it out there, and hopefully you can find the time to make this the priority that it should be, especially right now, especially right now when, when the holidays are here. Carrie, you hit it on the head, right? Stuff that happens early next year, you guys, when the world is thinking about New Year's, especially getting rid of this year, thinking about 2021, they're thinking about the the credit card they just racked up, the extra 10 pounds or what did I say, 15 pounds they added during that time through the holidays. They're thinking about those things and they're trying to get rid of that. They're trying to change and we have solutions in those areas, but the effort can't be at a standstill and then you start January 1st. It needs to start right now. And the growth might happen a little bit in December, but you'll see the, the massive 90 day push, we call it because it takes 90 days typically to see or have the, the, the effort that you put in to come to fruition and that the seeds that have been planted to grow and all those other pieces, it takes time, okay? And so right now is the time to run. Um, nobody told me that, that this was a bad time to build in the past and I'm glad they didn't because we did the most good for the most people during this time, right? We ran like our lives depended on it. We, we were risking everything to save everything. We might've come from a little more humble circumstances than some, but that's why we ran. We, we had a reason to. And somebody asked me at one time, we said, oh, we doubled our income. And they said, well, how do you double your income? I said, well, if you start with a very small salary, <laughs> it's not hard to double your income if, if, to start with. Um, you know, you got doctors and lawyers looking at me like, doubling my income is going to take a lot. And it, and it is. But doubling what we had wasn't much. And it was fun to watch those kind of changes 
happen in, in our lives. And so my biggest thing I want to leave to you tonight is to take ownership. Okay. Corporate's there to help. Crossline's there to help. Calls like this are here to help. We'll, we'll help. We'll do what we can. We will help, but you build your business, right? We will help. You your business. Half a phrase there. Um, I'll end with one touch story from my family that might help you realize that. Um, and it goes along with the situation I shared. And I, I know time's short tonight. I'm kind of shoving all this into a 30 minute deal, but I just want you guys to know I appreciate you. Um, there's so much, I hope, little training pieces that you can hear and grab from this because I want you to be inspired to, to go do something. I want you to realize that we're the same as you. We've just done it a little longer and we've figured a few things out along the way that we want to share with you. But one of the things I learned the most came from my daughter. One night I woke up in my room and I heard my daughter crying down the hallway. I heard her bawling. This is after the accident. She just got home. She's learning everything again. She's learning how to, to get in and out of her chair. And the first time she did it on her own was amazing because she was able to do that without help. And it was liberating to her. She had freedom again. She could get in her chair and get around a little bit. Well, I came down the hallway one day and she's trying to put on her, her socks, right? I call this the because it had to realize what I learned. But I went down the hall and I see my daughter struggling to put her socks on. At 20 minutes, she was trying to put her socks on, crying, struggling because she'd fall over. She had no control of her, her core because of the spinal cord injury. <clears throat> and as a dad, <laughs> the tough dad, I grabbed the socks and said, give me those socks. I'm going to put them on for you, all right? I'm going to fix this for you because that's what my job is. That's not what a mentor's job is. But in my world, I thought that's what my job was as a dad. And my daughter taught me something very special. She said, dad, she said, let me have my socks back. So she got them. She was still crying. She says, dad, do me a favor. I have to learn this. She said, I can't have you put my socks on forever, right? I have to do this on my own. But then she said the most powerful thing. She said, just stay here while I figure it out, right? Let me do it. Just don't leave. Don't leave me. Let me learn. Let me own it. Let me figure this out. It's my challenge. It's my business, if you would, right? Let me own it. You just don't leave. You be there. And that's the role I've taken so much since then, you guys, is, is it's your business. We will be there. My business is there for me to own. I have others there for me when I needed it, um, but we've owned it. Take ownership. Let corporate lift where they stand. You lift where you stand. Do your part and do it really well. Figure it out. Learn the invite. Uh, the tool, the teach, the ITT, because there's more coming, right? That's the initial way to get people in and to duplicate. But we need to still teach people how to be fearless and how to have skills. And those are coming. You're going to see more and more things coming. So we love you. We appreciate you guys. I'm hoping some of this um, radiates a little bit with you and sticks with you because every day I think I, I pray and say, say the same thing, right? <laughs> I'll figure this out, but don't leave me, right? That's why I feel like I feel like it's in my heart. I feel like I'm trying to share is it's yours, own it, especially now. Um, I hope your great, great grandkids are thanking you because you pushed through the holidays. You learned a system, you learned a concept. You didn't just go out and complain and want everyone to do it for you. You took ownership and now you have something substantial. You have a well that's full. You have stuff coming in in case your life has to change or you need to spend time somewhere else or you need to focus somewhere else for a short term. You can because you did the work in your business and the legacy that you will leave through that process could be forever. It's amazing. So um, Pamela, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on the call. I'd love to share again later. There's so many thoughts in my mind right now that I'm just running through, but um, push through the holidays. We appreciate you guys and we'll see you as soon as we can. And hopefully it's not on a Zoom. I hope we're giving hugs and handshakes as, as soon as we can. So Pamela, back to you. Blue, you have an open invitation to come down here. Um, Anytime you choose. So um, probably right now you'd have to do two weeks isolation <laughs> at a very it might be worth, I'll do it. <laughs> So we'll, we'll probably wait a little bit. As soon as the doors are open, we would dearly love to have you join us here. Thank you for sharing some really powerful messages today. Um, I love the take ownership of your business and, and what you said about, you know, we're here, we're all here to hold hands and support, but people need to, you know, to do things for themselves when they're running their own business. So, um, other than that, there was a, plenty of other messages that I think um, a lot of people have gotten a lot of value out of today. So Blue, thank you for your time. We will see you again soon. We would love to have you join us on some webinars next year in 2021. Wow, it's just around the corner. And um, we just wish for you and your family lots of happiness over the Christmas period. So 
Um, hoping you enjoy some lovely festivities. Thank you so much, Blue Elam. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm now going to hand over to the amazing Claire Duke. Welcome, Claire. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Thanks, Blue. Hello, everyone. Just trying to work out. Oh. Technology is our friend when we're trying to sit next to each other and work out the computers. So, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Wow, Carrie and Blue. What a way to finish off 2020. Drop it in the chat how much you loved both of their, their um, words of inspiration, you know, the why from Blue and hearing his story, just incredible. So thank you so very much. And as we said, the open invitation to come down here as soon as that, those borders open, we'd love to have you both here. But today, this is another lovely lady that we were trying to get on and, and the stars aligned for her to be on our last call for 2020. Um, the beautiful Pooja De Silva, who went Pro 5 this year. So Pooja, over to you and share a bit of your story for everybody. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Claire. Uh, can oh. you hear me? Can't hear you. Um, you can't hear me? No, I can hear. I can hear her fine. Okay, is your microphone on? Yeah, no, no, I'm fine. Other people can hear. Yep, we can hear you just fine. Okay, I'll continue. All right, look, um, thank you so much, Claire, for inviting me here today. I know you've been trying to ask me to come and share my story for a couple of months now. As you said, the stars are not right. I had other issues, but here I am. Um, and I'm happy to, you know, just share my story with everybody. Anyway, to first, thank you so much, Carrie and Blue. You blew my mind. There's so much of, you know, important and valuable information that I've gathered today. And um, yeah, it gave me goosebumps, really. Such inspiring stories. Thank you so much. Anyway, everyone, my name is Pooja De Silva and I live in Sydney. Thank you for this opportunity to share my story with you today. So my background is I'm a mother of two beautiful children. My daughter is a doctor specializing in pediatrics and my son is also studying to be a doctor. I worked as a medical coordinator in a hospital until recently. Although I was a, it was a challenging role, I loved my job. I worked very hard and worked very, very long hours for many years. It wasn't easy. And over the years, it was getting to me, my health and my family time. So that's when I decided one fine day that enough was enough and it was time for me to quit my job. I was actually introduced to network marketing several years ago. However, how I got involved with Life Vantage is a fascinating and an interesting story. And I'm very grateful to Josie Tong who introduced Life Vantage to me. I have known Josie for a number of years for my previous company. So anyway, last year in August, I was attending a global convention in Utah. Josie and I happened, both happened to be staying at the same hotel. So when Josie mentioned that she was moving from her previous company to Life Vantage, we were in total shock. We were very curious to find out about the new company that she was moving to. So while we were in Salt Lake City, Josie, myself, and five other people who are now Pro 5 and above in our team were invited to meet up with Tara Wilson and Cortland Pearson. I was more excited to meet Tara, who is Josie's sponsor. We were also invited to the head office to meet the CEO and the rest of the corporate executive. I was very impressed with what I saw and heard, especially their culture. And we have an amazing product that is unmatchable to anything else that I have ever known. So in my head at this point, I was all in to embark on this fresh start. And so my journey with Life Vantage officially started on 1st of September, 2019. And I kept remembering this quote at the time, if someone offers you an amazing opportunity, but you are not sure you can do it, just say yes, then learn how to do it later. That's exactly what I did. And as they say, rest is history. And so I joined Life Vantage because I had a vision and a mission. As I mentioned earlier, it was at a point when my health and family time was at a compromise. I had to look for other options something that would make a huge difference in my life. So joining Life Vantage has been a total game changer for me. 
Since then, I have never looked back. I have come a long way and it's best decision that I made. Getting to my profile rank has not been an easy journey for me. It has been like a roller coaster ride. I had so many setbacks and faced so many challenges along the way. But I was determined not to give up and kept working on my goals. Going back to August last year, there were seven of us who visited the head office and met the corporate staff. We were so excited to become part of Life Vantage. However, I had previous travel plans, so while I continued to travel for two more months, the rest of the gang returned home and they worked hard to reach their profile and above within their first month. Isn't that amazing? Oh my God. So I was, of course, a little disheartened at first that I was not able to achieve what they did. But hey, that didn't dampen my hunger and my mindset. By this time, I had developed an unshakable mindset. My why was bigger and stronger and more important than the rejections that I got. So the lesson that I learned is never to give up. Be consistent and never ever compare yourself to others. So I worked consistently for months and when the time was right, I found the right people. I work long hours, late into nights, building and helping my new teams. I was also expanding to my business to into international markets. We had about three or four meetings every week with continuous follow-ups, practically all day. It wasn't easy, I can tell you that, but it was worth every effort that I put into it. With the support of my mentor, Josie, of course, a special shout out goes to Jing and Arnold, who continuously supported me during my run. We managed to create a number of Pro 4s, uh, Pro 3s, and also multiple number of Pro 2s during the run, creating great results. So moving forward, I can say I'm aiming to qualify to the next Profile Summit coming up next year, and will help my teamies also to qualify for the summit. That is my next immediate goal. So um, in conclusion, I would like to share three tips that work well for me in my journey to achieve profile. And these tips hopefully can help others too. The first and the most simple tip is trust your intuition. Trust your gut feeling. Don't overthink. Just go with the flow. That's how I stepped into my life vantage journey. I didn't stop to think, what if, what happens? Look, it's not going to help. I simply trusted my gut feeling and the person who introduced life vantage to me. And the second point I can tell you is attend events. You learn and improve your business when you attend events. Seriously, it's non-negotiable. Be a student of your business and master it. I embraced every opportunity and made sure that I showed up at all the trainings and coaching sessions, rarely missing them, and worked progressively on my personal development. As they say, knowledge is power. So this is very true in your LV business. And lastly, work with your team. We have an excellent team culture in Life Vantage. So work with it. Trust your team. Believe in your team. I know I wouldn't have been able to progress to where I am today without the support of my team. For this, I'm ever so grateful. So hey, Claire, this is, um, that's just my story. <laughs> Well done, Pooja. I know how nervous you were before today, but wow, you are such a natural leader and presenter. Drop in the chat, guys, how incredible that was. Because, yeah, she was very, very nervous, and I know that all of us get nervous presenting. Oh but it's still. one big goal, and um, look out. I told you we might get you up on that stage at Leader Academy. So who knows? Who knows? But thank you so very, very much for sharing your story and sharing your tips. Um, it was just incredible. So well and, uh, done. And, and thank look you out. Staff. Yes, thank you, the yeah. corporate staff and everybody else. And I'd love to thank my team. Uh, we have such a great culture. It's not just my team. It's all I'm talking about cross culture, cross teams, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not over here, globally. So I'm so happy where I am today and I have, I, I am a product of the product. <laughs> yeah, absolutely you are. And um, yeah, congratulations. And Pro 5 Summit, look out, we're, we're going next year. So you <laughs> can't wait. So thank you so very much. Um, I'm just going to hand over to Pamela. Next thank to you. Me. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again, Pooja. It was lovely to hear some words from you. Um, oh, am I? 
I need to unmute myself if I'm going to talk. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pooja. It's lovely to see you um, growing as a leader and just everything that you're doing. Congratulations. Team, yeah. that wraps us up. This is our final webinar for 2020. What a crazy year. Uh, we still have managed to go and grow and um, do incredible things despite all the challenges that many of us have experienced this year. So congratulations to each and every one of you. We will be doing a very special Christmas Zoom in the coming weeks. So look out for that, the information on that one. And, and we'd love you all to get your favorite Christmas attire on and have a little bit of fun as we close out the year. So once again, special thanks to our incredible leaders that joined us today. Thank you so much, Carrie Dickey. And thank you, Blue. We appreciate everything that you do to support our South Pacific region as well. And as I said, you have an open invitation. We want you down under. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you to all the teams from across the world that have joined us today. We're just really happy to, for you to join our call. Till next time. See you guys. Bye. Thank you.